I'm curious, you know, I see some people and I, honestly myself, even at times, we don't know what we don't know. And a lot of times we set goals and really it's not about what we actually want or what we think we want. And it's just misguided. I'll try to think of an example here. So there's the, I'm thinking of the blue collar contractor who thinks that he wants to, you know, get the next crew. And in reality, that goal is really misleaded because he's not ready for the next crew. And that's actually not going to be the most profitable endeavor for him. He doesn't have the skill set to manage people from a distance. He doesn't have the technology to be able to track what they're doing, all these kinds of things. And rather than go for that next crew, if he would just take a little bit of time and focus on increasing his margins, that would actually get him what he really wanted. How do you guide people through finding the right goals to set and actually going down the right paths rather than you know, choosing something that they think is what they want, but it's really misguided. Well, one of the things that I do is I, I kind of take a different approach. So if you do want to expand your business, the first thing I ask you is why, you know, what's in it for you to expand your business? Okay. Let's get that very clear. And you have to convince me that that's very clear before we go to the next step. But the yeah. other- can you give us an example of like a really clear reason why? Yeah. Someone has a certain way that they want to live. You know, they have a certain home they want to live in. They have a certain car they want to drive. They have certain vacations they want to go. They have certain charities they want to be involved in. They have certain health uh, hobbies they want to get involved in or sports or spiritual, peaceful. Um, what, you know, pets, I mean, draw your perfect nirvana, get it out there on paper and then go after one puzzle piece at a time, right? So, but I, I take a little different tack there because for me, and this happened to me personally, you know, you're one person. So the first thing I want you to do is to say, okay, the only way I can grow my company is to become irrelevant to it. And people go, what the hell does that mean? I mean, I'm the boss. I'm this like guy or this gal. I make all the decisions. I go home and beat my chest. I fix this. I changed that. I motivated this. I, I altered that. Yeah, great. But you also worked 80 hours this week and now you've got, you know, diabetes and high blood pressure and you're, you know, you, you can't enjoy the fruits of your labor. I would rather have you say, is there any entrepreneurs in my organization? And there's a difference between entrepreneur and entrepreneur, and that usually involves the risk. But can I find entrepreneurs around me within my organization who will run this company or at least their department the way they feel like they own it, right? And this happened to me. I'll give you a quick example. I'm sitting in my office. This is 15 years ago. I want to take the company to the next level. I had people come into my office, about 10 of them that I thought were pretty good candidates. And I said, here's a piece of paper and a pencil. I want you all to write down how far you think we can take this company in the next year, revenue-wise. Now, wouldn't you know it that every one of those people put down two or three million dollars higher in revenue than I did on my piece of paper? So yeah. that's it. You don't know what you don't know, part. Yeah. So what does that teach you? It teaches you that you might be your own limiting factor. So when people hear me say, "If you want to grow your company, become irrelevant to it," they're like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, hey, hang on a minute. I'm going to lose control." You're not. You're going to become the visionary that you think you want to be. You're going to create pathways for that growth and you're going to allow other people to do, you know, the mechanical part of that. And then you're going to share that newfound revenue with them in such a way where they look back at you and say, thanks, Ken, now get out of my way and let me do it. And that's not, that's not pie in the sky theory. That's actual practical knowledge. and it, it actually works because when someone goes from, while I'm working for the man and I'm making him money, when they go from that to, I can create a life for myself with and through his organization and he's putting me in control of that, man, you better get out of their way because they're going to take your company way further than you can take it yourself. Mm. I think that's such an interesting thing. And I think a, a lot of, I think a lot of uh, employers, contractors, small business owners don't think about their team in that respect. What are the, the means that you can motivate your employees like that? And we're talking financial in, in this case, I think a little bit in terms of they want to be able to provide for their family and do all those things. What are the, the mechanisms you can set up to be able to actually uh, provide your employees with those opportunities? Is it profit sharing? Is it uh, ownership? What, what are the things that you use? Well, it's, it's several fold. Um, so 
first off, I believe that everyone that controls their own department should benefit from the efficiencies within that department financially, and that's on a monthly basis. Secondly, I think there are things like quarterly hits of the whole company performance, regardless of it's in the department, not that they're in control of. And then finally, there's this year-end celebration where if you hit this level of revenue, everybody shares in a piece of that and you find some wonderful place to go share that, whether, whether you go to a all-inclusive in Mexico for five days or you do whatever. And before anyone says, oh, I can't afford that, you're right. You can't afford it. But once you do what, 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 what we're talking about as, as far as expanding and getting that additional revenue, you plan for that expense all along the way. So that way, when it comes time to celebrate in a place like Mexico or wherever you end up going, that is already paid for. Something we've been doing for years here. And the, the, the only caution I will say there is that every one of those people has to have a crystal clear reason for why they're doing it. They all have to have their own, you want to call them vision boards, that's fine. I, I think our, our vision boards here are, are, are much more detailed than most, but I think if you have a group of people that are each winning for themselves, then you can stand in front of them and say things like, I can't get what I want for this company, nor can I get what I want for myself until all of you get what you want first. And I absolutely believe that, guys, because I think companies are linear creatures. I think you have input from the one side, you have work creation, you have product or service and revenue, and then you have profit at the end. You know, you're always at, as the owner, you're always at the end of that line. So why wouldn't you want everybody behind, in front of you winning like crazy for themselves in a very selfish way for them? Because hmm. you're going to win in the end almost every time when that happens.